Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It's Wednesday, November 13, today, 2019. And our gospel for this morning comes from St. Luke, chapter 17, verses 11 to 19. Yay! Hey, Ava is cheering already. Okay, this is a very nice gospel. Uh, all gospels are nice, but this one has a very... <laughs> A very uh, clear message for us, uh, especially during these days, that uh, we are trying to promote uh, something. Anyway, so Jesus continued his journey to Jerusalem. He traveled through Samaria and Galilee. And he, as he was entering a village, ten lepers met him. Ten lepers. What, is, what, what are lepers? Hmm? Okay. Leprosy, leprosy is a a, a disease which um, has base, has uh, for the large part been eradicated already. But uh, I understand there's still some pockets uh, of uh, places in the world where this uh, disease exists, um, and it is a very it's a very very uh, dreadful kind of disease. It is. Well, uh, hard to describe to you, but it is a, a viral disease where uh, the, f the, f the flesh is eating itself. It's basically like that. It's, you can look it up later on if you want to learn a little bit more about this. But, you know, you know I have first-hand experience with leprosy. I have first-hand experience with dealing with people with leprosy. Okay? Because when Grandpa was in politics and we would go around campaigning in some places in the Philippines and this was when I was a kid okay we we would go to a leper colony there was such a thing as a leper colony in the Philippines yeah and we would go there and we would be campaigning among the lepers and we would be shaking hands with these lepers yeah and it was it was a very very uh, risky and dangerous uh, thing to do but you see your grandpa Jacob um, wanted to reach out to these people that was how concerned uh, grandpa Jacob was with attending to the needs even of people with leprosy okay? and we would go there to their colony and really minister to them okay and that is why I, I know exactly what leprosy does to people. And I'd encourage you later on after this, okay, because we are still wrapping up breakfast here. After this, you go look up what leprosy is yes. and you're going to see exactly what I mean. Okay, it is, it is a very pitiful sight. It is a very difficult, it is a very difficult sight to see. And especially when you have a colony of people afflicted with the same disease. It's just very tough to to see a situation like that. Okay? But anyway, uh, uh, later on we can look it up. Okay? But anyway, so here are 10 lepers who perhaps, uh, you know, lepers back in the day, uh, like in, in the case in the Philippines, they were all kept in one place. They were not allowed to go out of that colony. That's why we had to go there for them. Same thing is true at the time of Jesus Christ. These lepers cannot be allowed inside the city. They normally lived in the outskirts where nobody could see them and nobody could touch them and they could not approach anybody. They were considered a curse. See? So they were really outcasts of, of the communities. Um, and so, but then as Jesus was traveling to Samaria, through Samaria and Galilee, he entered a village. And maybe these lepers discovered, they found out Jesus was there. So they wanted to ask him to heal them and so they, they they ran to him and they they stood at a distance from him see they stood at a distance from him because they didn't want to approach him because of their kind of disease and raised their voice raised their voice maybe they shouted at Jesus saying Jesus master have pity on us Jesus master have pity on us and when he saw them he said listen to what he said Go show you show yourselves to the priests. 
So go, show yourselves to the priests. As they were going, they were cleansed. As they were on their way to show themselves to the priests, as Jesus told them, they were cleansed. And one of them, one of them, how many lepers were there? Ten. One of them, when he realized, I'm cured. I'm cured. I'm healed. Return to Jesus, glorifying God in a loud voice. And he fell at the feet of Jesus and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. Okay? He was even a Samaritan, not even a Jew. Maybe the rest of them were Jews. But this guy was a Samaritan. Jesus said in reply, Ten were cleansed, were they not? Ten were cleansed, were they not? Where are the other nine? Has none but this foreigner returned to give thanks to God? Then he said to him, Stand up and go. Your faith has saved you. <clears throat> what, what lessons can we learn <clears throat> from this script, scripture today, from this gospel today? I want to point out two things. This is one one of the proofs of confession to a priest. Okay? This is one of the proofs that, that are given scripturally uh, where we uh, point out that Jesus wanted us to go to confession to a priest. Not that we cannot go directly to God. We can. But Jesus has wanted us to seek validation of that confession of our sins from a priest. And here, see, the leprosy is like sin that was cleansed by our Lord commanding the lep lepers, go and show yourselves to the priests. Okay? And while they were yet on their way, they haven't even gone there, they were already healed. So Jesus wants us to seek forgiveness through the instrumentality of the priest in confession, through the action of the priest in confession. So, uh, go to the priest, right? That's what he said. Now, but the second part I want to emphasize here is that need for the expression of gratitude. The, 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 the expression of thanks for all the graces and benefits and good things that God has given us. See, gratitude is a virtue that our Lord looks for very clearly. He asked, Were, weren't the ten healed? How come only one has returned? Where's everybody else? See? Are they that ungrateful, really? That after they had been healed and given all of these good things, healed from their affliction, from their suffering, they couldn't even take it upon themselves to give thanks so gratitude is a very very important virtue we need to give thanks to God because giving thanks to God is a big expression of humility of our dependence on God of recognizing that all good things that we have come from God that without God we are nothing we are unprofitable servants remember Remember, we are unprofitable servants. But God made us His children. And as children, we are heirs to heaven. And, and as heirs to heaven, we are already benefiting now from the many graces that God gives us and many good things that God gives us. We don't even have to wait to get to heaven for God to give us good things. We're already getting many good things from God. Now, where is our sense of gratitude? Where is our sense of uh, humility to thank God for all of these good things? We cannot, we cannot be presumptuous and think that we deserve these good things. No, we don't. We are unprofitable servants. We don't deserve these good things. But God, in His goodness, 
has wanted to give us these good things. Okay? Just look at all these things we can enjoy in our lives now. Just, just think, compare your lives with the lives of many other people, with the lives of many people you see around you. Right? You should be grateful that you have clothes to put on this winter. You should be grateful that you have breakfast. You should be grateful that you are being educated. You should be grateful that you have toys. You should be grateful that you have a bed to sleep on. You have to be grateful that you have musical instruments. You have whatever it is. You, you have shoes to put on your feet. You have to be grateful that you have all of these things that many, many other people don't have. I've shown you plenty of videos of children starving in Africa and many other parts of the world. You went to the Philippines and you saw the poverty abounding in the Philippines around them. Right? You don't even need to go that far. You walk the streets of Modesto. You drive to the streets of downtown. Plenty of homeless people. You look at San Francisco and look at all the homeless people roaming around. These people have no place to stay. These people have no food to eat. These people have no clothes on their backs. They roam the streets aimlessly not knowing where to get their next meal or where to lay their head at night. Look at the contrast. Look at the benefits God has given you. How can you be ungrateful? Right? How can you be ungrateful? We have to give thanks all the time. All the time. Every time we see something like that, our first instinct should be, Thank you, Lord, because I have food. Thank you, Lord, because I have clothes. Thank you, Lord, for this. Thank you, Lord, for that. Thank you for everything. <clears throat> but what is the biggest gift that we get every day? In fact, we have been fortunate to get an avail of every day for which we really, really have to be very thankful for. What is that gift? Can you remind me? What is that? The Eucharist, Mia. The Eucharist. See? We have been very fortunate that we can receive our Lord in the Holy Eucharist every day. Every day. See? And that is why we give thanks. We try to stay around after Mass to give thanks to God for having received Jesus in the Holy Eucharist. Now this, my friends, is one tradition that has been lost to many Catholics in the church. And it's uh, something that we have been here campaigning for a lot. Many people just leave after Mass. Or, <laughs> worse yet, uh, after just receiving our Lord from Holy Communion in that Mass, they, they would rather socialize in the plaza. Right? Shake hands with people and chit chat here and there or grab their donuts and coffee after mass. Oblivious of the fact that they are walking tabernacles. That they just received Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament a few minutes. And they could not even find it in themselves to give thanks after mass. These are like the nine lepers cured from their leprosy. But they couldn't care less about giving thanks. They went about their merry way, eating their donuts and their coffee and shaking hands with newfound friends in the plaza or chit-chatting with old ones, forgetting that they are carrying our Lord. They're all walking tabernacles. That's why many times I feel like genuflecting in front of all of these people, you know, which is what we should do. Because they are all walking tabernacles after Mass, after having received our Lord. Yet, there are like nine lepers here who couldn't care less. Right? Very sad. Very sad. Very sad. And those of you who recognize this gift of the Holy Eucharist, I would encourage you. Spend 10 to 15 minutes at least to give thanks to God for having received them in Holy Communion. And there is science behind that, by the way. This is not something that the church just invented to give us more time to stay in church. No. It takes about 10 to 15 minutes after receiving the species of bread and wine enough for, for those species to disintegrate in our bodies. 
And while that process is happening, we could spend the time recollected in prayer, in thankful prayer to Jesus, not only for having received them in the Blessed Sacrament, but also for the many other graces that He continually showers upon our lives. Thanksgiving, 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 folks, is a very, very important habit, a very important virtue, and let's never ever forget to give thanks to God for everything. And especially, let's fight to bring back that tradition of Thanksgiving after Holy Communion and after Mass. Okay, we're going to Mass. Bye-bye, everybody. Have a good day. Have a good day ahead of you. Hope to see you again tomorrow. Bye. Bye.